Wall Street Journal published an article titled Eviction Surge in Major Cities Across the Sun Belt, which stirred a lot of controversy. Eviction Lab is a research unit at Princeton University. And what they reported is that eviction filings over the past year in half a dozen cities are up 35% or more compared with pre-2020 norms. Which cities are evictions rising the fastest? Number one is Las Vegas. Number two is Houston. And number three, Phoenix. Now, of course, a big culprit of all of these evictions are, of course, rent hikes. And according to Zillow, since the pandemic, rental rates have gone up by around 29.4%. Personally, I think rental rates have gone up by more than 30%, but don't take my word for it. I'm just a random guy on YouTube. In any case, just a couple of days after this report was published by the Wall Street Journal, the White House came out before President Biden announced that he's not going to be running for re-election. He came out and said that essentially the White House is looking to propose a rent cap for landlords. Let me just read you what the proposal is. President Biden made a splash this week by calling on Congress to revoke lucrative tax breaks from corporate landlords that raise the rent by 5% or more a year. So here's what we're going to do. I'm going to go over three things. Number one is I'm going to go over what's happening with evictions in America. Number two, I'm going to go over what's happening with the rental market, why rental prices have been booming. And number three is I'm going to go over these rent caps and what that looks like. So let's start with number one, what's going on with evictions. But first, I want to remind you that on August 15th, 1971, the United States dollar was taken off the gold standard. And because of that, this year, 53 years later, I'm hosting a live, free, and virtual investor summit where I'm going to be going over how our money has changed, not just over the last five decades, but also over the last five years. And more importantly, I'm going to be going over how you can find new investment strategies in this changing economy to build wealth today in 2024. We'll be talking about things like how inflation is impacting investments, how the interest rates are impacting investments, how the slowing economy is impacting investments, and how you can build wealth in today's economy. So if you'd like to join, it's completely free. It's live. All you have to do is register. Just make sure you register soon because there's a limited number of people that can actually join me live. So if you'd like to join, we have a couple options on August 14th and 15th, and I got the link for you down in the description below. Starting with evictions, the primary headline is that evictions have been rising in the Sun Belt, primarily in the southwest part of the United States. Some cities like New York City and Philadelphia and Wilmington and Delaware have recorded massive drops in evictions so far this year. So when you ask a broad question like, are evictions rising in the United States? The answer is, it depends on where you're talking about, and it also depends on the regulations of which city you're talking about, because it's a lot harder to file an eviction in some cities over another. For example, if we take a look at New York where eviction rates have been falling, it can take anywhere from three months to a year to file an eviction. And then we can compare that to somewhere like Texas, where we know evictions have been rising in Houston. And in Texas, it can take anywhere from a few weeks to a few months for an eviction to be filed. And if we look overall across the country, what we've seen is that evictions are actually lower today than what they were before the pandemic. Take a read. The first five months of the year had about 422,000 eviction filings across the 33 cities and an additional 10 states that were tracked, which is down slightly from pre-pandemic norms. And this brings me to part two, which is what's been going on in the rental market and why have we seen this big rise in rental rates? The elevated evictions follow a sharp acceleration in rents after pent-up demand during the pandemic flooded supply of housing markets with people looking to rent and those rents have pushed many lower income tenants to the brink of what they can afford to spend. What does that mean? Supply and demand. We had a lot of people that wanted to move after the pandemic. And as people were moving, well, there wasn't that many homes being built. So we had a limited supply of homes available for rent in this instance, and a lot of people that wanted to move into these homes. So now when you had a limited supply of homes available for rent, and a lot of people putting in applications to rent these homes, well, rental prices went up. And so now if you were comfortable paying $1,200 a month and now your rent went up to $1,400, $1,500, $1,800 a month, well, either now you pay the higher price, you got to find a new home. And if you have to find a new home, that might mean you have to relocate, you have to move, you have to go through all the headache of finding a new home. And so maybe you say, I'll just try to make it work. And now you try to make it work. And then you're also dealing with inflation all around you. Groceries are more expensive. Car costs are more expensive. I mean, everything is more expensive. And if your income hasn't kept up or if you face any sort of financial hardship, well, now you have higher rent costs, higher eating costs, higher living costs. And that's what has pushed a lot of people in some of these areas into that eviction because they can't keep up with the rent. But the key I want you to remember here is how supply and demand have impacted rental rates because there's been a limited supply of rental properties available. And because there's not that many rentals available, well, rental prices can keep going up.
And this brings us to the whole topic of rent caps and how that would impact the rental market. Now, we've been talking about this in Market Briefs. Market Briefs is my free financial newsletter where every day my team is breaking down what's happening in the financial markets. If you haven't read Market Briefs yet, it's completely free. You can read it in less than five minutes every morning. And I got the link for you down in the description below. But I want to talk about these rent caps, not from a political standpoint, just from a financial standpoint, there's a lot of people that talk about the political side. I'm going to focus on the finances, so if you're easily upset, I'm sorry. In the short term, what we've seen from history is that when you apply rent caps, they give tenants a little bit of comfort knowing that I'm not going to get a huge rent increase next year. So they have a little bit of comfort knowing that there's going to be a limit to how much my rent can go up every single year. That's the first part on the tenant side, which is kind of what the whole purpose of rent caps are, is to give tenants some relief knowing that they're not going to see their rent prices potentially double next year. On the flip side, landlords don't like the idea of a rent cap because, well, if the market goes up from $1,000 a month to $2,500 a month, they want to be able to raise their rent to $2,500 a month. But if you can't do that, well, that makes it a little bit more difficult. That is the initial part of this, the short-term value of that. But then you have to look at the long-term implication of this because now you have to understand, well, what is causing the rental issues in the first place? Well, what do we talk about here? Supply and demand. When you have not enough supply and a lot of demand, the prices of this thing go up. Now, when you have the price of an item going up, competitors look at this and they say, huh, there's a lot of money to be made here. And that then drives in competition, which helps lower prices. Competition is bad for business owners, good for consumers. Right? If you are a landlord, you don't want to have a lot of competitors because that means, well, now you have to compete against other people. But as a consumer, you want competitors because that means, well, they're going to be competing against each other to give you a better product and a better price. That's how competition works. So now, if a landlord or a real estate investor or a developer sees big profit potential, then that incentivizes a developer. In theory, I understand there's been exceptions to this, but in theory, the way that it works is a developer then comes in and they say, huh, there's a lot of profit to be made here. Then that would incentivize them to come and build more housing. Now, it could be higher end housing. It could be lower end housing. It just depends on what the market is. But they're going to build whatever they believe is going to be able to continue to make them profit. Now, the interesting thing of what happens here, especially when it comes to things like housing, is you go through phases. You go through phases of underbuilding and overbuilding, undersupply, oversupply. And if developers keep seeing more and more profit, they keep building, 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 that could eventually lead to oversupply. Well, what does oversupply do? Oversupply means that, well, you as a tenant have 25 different options as to where to rent because nobody's renting. You have a lot of opportunities. Now, you as a tenant have more wiggle room when it comes to price because every landlord wants you to pay them money because now they're the ones that are bleeding cash. Today, we're not in that market. Today, we're in a market where there's not that many rentals available and you have a lot of tenants that want to rent these properties. But the only way to have the oversupply is if landlords are saying, we're going to keep building and we're going to keep building. And the only way they're going to keep building is if they see the profit potential. That's how competition works. But if you cap the rents, then what happens is you have less incentive or demand to potentially build. Now, of course, the government could come in and create new incentives and new proposals to incentivize a developer to potentially build. But if that's not there, they might not have the same incentive if the same profit potentials are not there because it costs money to build. In fact, it costs a lot more money to build today than what it did five years ago. It costs a lot more money to purchase an apartment complex today than it did five years ago because number one, you're going to have to pay more dollars and you're paying higher interest rates. So if I go out to buy an apartment complex tomorrow, well, it's going to have to give me bigger returns because it's going to be an expensive apartment complex. And if I'm paying 7% interest, I better see enough money coming in from this property to cover all the expenses, the higher property taxes, the higher insurance, the higher maintenance costs, the higher management fees, and put some money in my pocket for it to justify my purchase price, which means me to buy this property, I need the higher rental prices to justify my purchase price. And so then the only way to see a cooling in prices or even price growth would be to have more supply being built. And so you have to be careful with rent caps because if you cap the supply creation, then you also cap the ability to potentially have any sort. Because if you cap supply creation, you cap the ability to build real competition in the markets because that can affect the quality of rental properties in your area. Because if you don't have competition, landlords don't have to try to compete against each other. And that can also affect the quantity of rental properties in your area. 
So just something to think about. And these rent caps are also still at around 5%, which is higher than what inflation is. So something you want to think about that even if it is a 5% rent cap, that still means that a lot of landlords are raising their rental prices by higher than what inflation actually is. So I'd love to hear your thoughts about this. Is this a good idea when it comes to rent caps or not? I'd love to hear your thoughts down in the description below. When you pull money out of your no, 401k. No, no, you, it, it didn't, you, you weren't charged taxes while it sat there. What's wrong with you? 401ks are the most popular investment vehicle in the United States, but the studies show that most Americans have no idea of how they work. But that stops today, because I'm going to be going over five things you need to understand about your 401k.